a place of power a place of signs and wonders in jesus man and name amen god is able to do just what he says he will do he's gonna fulfill every promise to you don't give up on god thank you holy spirit we'll give him all the praise for this wonderful season now this is amen thank you musicians god bless you today is the second wednesday of the month of june today the 8th of june 2022 uh, we have started the powerful vision for the month if you have not gone through the wednesday you have to do so it's extremely powerful sunday was extremely powerful and we just thank the lord i release the blessings of god upon your family i release the blessings of god upon you a covering over you in jesus mighty name please sit down never go down Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. When our series of vision of we were on our series of our vision, the season of prayer. We are going to be covering tonight some extremely important point. On Sunday, we'll be making the fourth part. Of when you pray. Now what are you to expect tonight? You are to expect seven major points. Not so exhaustive, but at least seven major points. As I pray through the service for you, the first point the Lord wants me to share is... The quickening prayer life. There's a prayer that is just, you notice yourself that you want to pray. What is behind that? That you, 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 you know yourself, you always want to pray. <clears throat> Some don't want to pray, but you want to pray. That quickening prayer life, quickening spirit, quickening. That makes you to want to pray. There are some people that all the time they want to pray. They want to pray. What is behind that? I will show you a life since we are in the season of that from scripture. What does it look like? Number one. What is behind you seeing some people? Say, yeah, prophet, please teach that. Because I don't know. Many people want to pray. Me, I don't like to pray too much. What is going on with me? We'll cover that. Number two. It's going to cover seven points. The second point we are going to be covering is going to be the Jesus believer strength. The Jesus believer strength. There is a strength that a believer have that others don't have. A believer of Jesus Christ. A believer of John 14 6 because church everybody prays but they don't all pray through Jesus some pray through stones some pray through river some pray through all kinds of objects some pray through the Buddha Mohammed but we pray through Jesus so there is the G in prayer there is the Jesus believer strength it's a strength because when you pray in the name of Jesus, 
your prayer will have access. We're going to look at people that are not praying through Jesus. What is going on with their prayers? Sorry to say, church, if you are not praying with Jesus, <laughs> your prayers are not being answered. There is no guarantee that your prayers are being answered by God. In that, we are going to look at Colinus. Was his prayer answered by God? If we are to call that answer, because most scholars will say, Prophet, whatever, Art 10, the Colinus prayer, we're going to cover that. If Colinus prayer, when the angel of the Lord came and spoke to him, did he say his prayer was answered or not? So we're going to cover some other point that I think is so necessary on the objects, objectives of prayer. The goal of prayer. And we're going to look at commitment. And we're going to make reference of that. We've covered that on the prayer call. But we're going to be covering it on this Wednesday. We're going to be looking at communion which we've covered but we're just going to make mention of it emphasizing on the point again in prayer why communion is so important then we're going to talk about claim and then we are going to talk about implement implementations compliance so number one again, the quickening spirit of prayer. Number two, you can call it the Jesus benefit or the, the Jesus deliver strength in prayer. And number three, commitment. Number four, communion. Number five, claim. Number six, compliance. And number seven, pray without ceasing. What does that look like? Number one, the quickening spirit of prayer. Number two, there is something powerful about when a person that is praying with Jesus is praying. The Jesus factor in prayer. <laughs> you can title it that number two. The Jesus factor in prayer. The Jesus factor in prayer. The Jesus factor in prayer. And number three, commitment. Number four, communion. Different from communication, but communion. Number five, claim. Number six, to comply. And number seven, what does it mean when the Bible says pray without ceasing? Those are the seven things we are going to cover in this section in the next few minutes that we have here. So let's go into it. Number one, the quickening spirit. You know, Romans 8, 11 says, If the spirit that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in you, it said that spirit will quicken your mortal body. We quicken your if the spirit that raised up Jesus Christ. So there's a spirit that can quicken that have ability to quicken your mortal body. And one of those things he loves to quicken is to quicken your spirit man to pray. I want us to pay attention to this very well because I think this number one point is one of the most important points. It's extremely important for you, this number one point. This point here is if you have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit inside of you, in you, there is an automatic willingness to pray as a child of God. So, therefore, why is it that so many are still not praying is it that they 
are not willing? The answer is no, they are willing. So that is the point I want to raise. All believers that have the indwelling of the Spirit of God, they are all willing to pray. Then why are they not praying? They are not praying because of their bad experiences in prayer. Or they just feel like uh, prayer is boring. A research was done and one of the biggest complaints about prayer is on the aspect of the data shows that why don't you pray? They say it's too boring was the data. The data shows this, that people don't pray because they say it's just boring. Now, we do understand that in prayer you have to repeat some stuff over again. That there are not sometimes always new things in prayer that we pray. For example, we pray about crisis that is current. Any current thing, even when there's a current thing in the news, people start praying. Right, number two, we pray about, people are always praying about family. There's no way you check everybody praying all over the world today that you will not see prayer for family. Current crisis, they may be, might be praying about that. The family prayer, they might be praying about that. Check everybody pray all over the world, worldwide. Somebody prayed about finance. <laughs> Somebody prayed about, Lord, help me to pay my bills. Somebody prayed about that. Check all over the world that you can call that number three. So number one, the crisis. Present crisis always lead people to pray. Force people to move to pray. People that have never prayed before, when they see crisis, they pray. They pray. I've seen people that were mostly calling blood of Jesus <laughs> when there is a car crash. Anything that can help me. They will mention blood of Jesus. They will say blood of Mohammed too. <laughs> Anything that can help me here. So people, <laughs> if somebody catches something here, are you getting blood? So if you check people's prayer, we are talking about the willingness. So we have crisis lead people, family, finance. We have head challenges. Somebody's about to die. Come and see family. They didn't know Jesus before, but now they know him. Head crisis always lead people. I've seen people do all kinds of prayer. Another thing that I've seen people pray about their job. Even sometimes presidents or governors or all kinds of prayer. I've seen people running from election. They will go to strange altars, different churches. I've seen many people today prayed because of their job. If you check worldwide, people's prayer today is their job. Don't mind anybody that is carrying their face when you are teaching about prayer as if they are not listening. They are listening. Tell them you want to, after they, you want to increase their money, you see the listening is up. So, <laughs> finance, prayer. Work, prayer. People are also praying about their ministry. Some people are praying about their assignments. So I, these are some of the few things people pray all over the world. Is a general. So I will pray about these things daily. It's not a new phenomenon. So as a result of that, some people feel doing that same prayer over and over is boring. It's not boring. Amen. But what I'm telling you here is that there is a spirit in man that makes it not be, to be boring. Let me show you something Jesus said in his word. In the book of Matthew 26, verse 41, Jesus saw his disciples sleeping instead of praying. He told them this word. He said, the spirit is willing. And that there is talking about the small letter S inside of them. You know, man is made of a body, soul, and spirit. He said, the spirit inside of this man. They were sleeping instead of praying, but Jesus said something powerful. He said, the spirit is willing. That's what I'm saying. Everyone that have the Holy Ghost, your spirit is always willing to pray. So your, the Holy Ghost quicken your spirit to pray. So why are so many, so therefore, teachers of the word, listen to this carefully. 
The teaching should not be believers be willing to pray. That won't be, that's not a good teaching there. Because a believer that have the Holy Ghost wants to pray. Did somebody cut that? So if I'm teaching you, oh, believer, no, every believer wants to pray. The prophet, why are they not praying? That's, the pro that's what we need to talk about. They are not praying because of their experiences about prayer. And one of the major experiences is that prayer is boring. Is somebody catching something here? Every evil experience will terminate it in Jesus' name. But what I want you to see in this part is this. What I want you to see in this part is this. Catch this. If you want to pray more, don't learn prayer. Learn God. Most of the time you are learning prayer instead of learning God. The more you know about God, amen, the more you enjoy prayer. Because what have I said to you so far? You are already willing to pray. Every one of you hearing me, you are willing to pray. But you are not praying. Many of you here, believers, are you, will you love to pray in the morning? Yes, prophet. Uh -huh. You love to, but you don't do. You don't is the issue. You, but you love to. You want to. I might communicate this something here. How many of you love to pray for your children every day, every morning? You love to, but you don't. How many of you love to pray by your job every day and every morning? You love to, but you don't. How many of you love to pray about your finances every day? You will love to, but you don't. Why is boring for you to do? It's boring. You don't see no need to do that. It's boring. That's why you don't do that boring thing this morning. It's not boring for you to take a shower. You take a shower before you go to work. But to pray for your family, for your children, for your lover every day is boring to you. So you don't do it. It's almost hard. It's almost difficult. So how do we solve that? First of all, it's important for you to note that God wants you to pray about everything. So because God wants you to pray by everything, anything you bring before God in prayer, since the Bible says bring everything, is a fair game. Do you catch it? So you must know that, that God wants you to pray by everything to him. Ask him about everything. And you must also know this, that God instituted prayer. Who did? God instituted prayer prayer not you so do it praise the lord philippians 2 13 it is him that help you both to will and to do his good pleasure galatians 4 6 and romans 8 15 galatians 4 6 and romans 8 15 says it is god it is the holy spirit that is causing you to cry out, Abba Father. And you know, Abba Father, the first prayer in Luke 11, uh, verse 2, when you pray, say, Our Father. And Our Father means the Abba Father. You say, it is the Spirit of God that is causing you to pray. That's what that means. The scripture again is Galatians 4, 6. It's the Spirit of God that is causing you to cry at Abba Father. If you are not careful, you will think it is you that is crying at Abba Father. Amen. It is the Spirit of God that is crying out in you to say Abba Father, to pray. The way catch it. So you must understand there is a spirit power that is causing you to pray. It's not you that own yourself to pray. There's a spirit part to it that tell you begin to pray now for your begin to pray. They say it's quickening parts, the spirit. So you must know that. Oh, wow. The word of God said in Galatians chapter 4, verse 6 is the spirit that is causing me to pray. You must know the spirit, Romans 8 50 says, the spirit that is causing me to pray. You can't pray successfully anything God has not placed in your spirit. So don't take for granted what He's placing in your spirit. You don't have to pray it long, you don't have to pray it short. Whenever you are tired of praying that prayer, move to the next one. And God will be glorified. Amen? God is glorified. You don't have to stay one prayer point for long, or you don't have to stay. You can choose one prayer point for long. It doesn't matter. But God will be glorified. But we must take note. So what is, what is your takeaway there? 
your takeaway there is that there is a spirit factor that is willing to pray because of the Holy Ghost that is quickening you, which is your spirit, which is the man inside of you, the spirit man inside of you, to pray. So what is happening is that every child of God, God has called you to pray. Once the Holy Spirit dwells in you, it is automatic for the Holy Spirit to quicken you to want to talk to your father. To want to cry at Abba Father. Do we say that? That's what Galatians is saying there. Galatians 4, 6. The Holy Spirit out of you is causing you to want to cry Abba the Father. Because you are a son of God. You are heir according to his promise. So therefore, it is the method that we are holding you captive. And the experiences. And the solution is that get to know God more. And take all the series and everything that is having, happening here. And um, things will begin to happen for you. Glory be to God. And that is why in Matthew 7 verse 11, for those of you that are pastor, please note that the ultimate of prayer is the Holy Ghost. Because it's still that Holy Ghost that is going to quicken you to pray. Matthew 7, 11. Take note of that. Luke 11, 1, the disciples were asking for method. They've seen prayers before. They've seen prayers before. But the method was what they wanted to know. Teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. We need a method so that probably we can have answers. Or we can have quick answers. What were they were looking for. Number two point in this season of prayer is the Jesus factor in prayer. Why so? Why is this so important? Now, the Jesus factor in prayer is so important The Bible said in the book of Proverbs 15 verse 8 it said the cry of the wicked is an abomination unto the Lord. You call it the sacrifice of the wicked and prayer is a sacrifice. It's an abomination in this uh, New International Version, the sacrifice, which is also called the prayer of the wicked, is an abomination to God. So, anyone that do not know Jesus, when they pray, their prayer is an abomination. Why is it an abomination? Because God have already made it to be so that Jesus is the way. Matthew 14, 6. So, have you met people before that tell you this? You know what? I, I don't really know the Lord. <laughs> and they'll be laughing like they are foolish or crazy or something. You know, <laughs> you know what? I don't really know the Lord, but one time my little girl was sick and I called everybody, you know, or maybe I didn't call anybody. I prayed. I know the Lord. I heard me and he hear my little girl. Listen. It was not your prayer that did it. God do not hear people that do not go through Jesus. Period. What happens most likely was in that case that your daughter got healed or your son got healed and they, your mother did not die from that problem was just the sovereignty of God. Or he instructed another believer that knew Jesus. That saw you without you knowing. And prayed for you. An ambulance can be going by. And a true believer. God will want to save. A person because of the sovereignty of God. Will lay it in that believer. I pray for that person now. There are I do it a lot. There are many people that start praying. And those people don't have no. They don't know Jesus. But because of the prayer. Of somebody that knows Jesus. God answer. So that's one way. God is in the business of dividing prayers worldwide to all the saints to pray and he knows how to use it. The Holy Ghost is an expert of that. So let me tell you, don't be confused. If your mother came out and you all don't know Jesus, that prayer was not answered 
because of your prayer, period. Any prayer that do not go through Jesus Christ is an abomination to God. I'm not talking about the point where you answer in the name of Jesus at the end. No. All prayers all over the world. Doesn't matter who is the president, who is the senator, who is the congressman. That is not true the Lord Jesus. Why? Because if God answered your prayer outside of Jesus, God is saying Jesus is not necessary. And the sacrifice was not for all. So get it now. If you are not going to use Jesus to pray. No matter your need. God will not respond. He will not answer. And no matter. Your temporary humility. God will never respond. No matter. This is another point. A lot of people use. Your sincerity. <laughs> I sincerely want my father to be saved. Your father will sincerely die. You know, sincerely die also. God, do not answer your prayer. It must be a prayer through Jesus Christ. Because it is a way to honor Jesus. So this is what I call the Jesus factor in prayer. It's so big. If I believe I pray for you, God can do it. Another time is when in his sovereign power, he plans to heal your mother and he did not have nothing, nothing to do with your prayer. So even though you would have kept quiet and don't pray, your mother would not have died because it was not her time in the sovereignty of God, not in your prayer, not you praying. So you can as well keep quiet and God will still do what he has to do. In that matter. Hey somebody. You must come in prayer. With the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 54 verse 17 says. And their righteousness is of me. Said the Lord. My God. My time is running. I'm supposed to minister for 28 minutes. My time is running. Alright. That's number two point. You see the Jesus factor. We cover the Holy Ghost factor first of all. Where you can see the Holy Ghost quickening people to pray, that willingness. So it's not anybody that have the Holy Ghost, they want to pray. It's their bad experience and thinking prayer is boring. That's why they're not praying. They know more about God, they want to pray. There's, a, there's something in you that want to make, you want to pray. It's there. God is the one that put it there. <laughs> All right. Number three. Commitment. Jesus said that he is the vine and you are the branch. If the branch goes away from the vine, John 15, 5 to 7 there, if the branch goes away from the vine, the branch will be destroyed and discarded. You must be connected to God. Why do you, what is the objective of prayer? The objective of prayer is to show who you are committed to. You pray to show who you are committed to. You are committed to God. You are loyal to God. You are devoted to God. So you continuously pray to him. Extremely important. Number four. Communion. Communion. If you look at Jeremiah 33. 3, it said that. If you call upon me. That's prayer. I will show you. That's communion. It's not just speaking to God. It is God speaking back to you. That's why we call it communion. So prayer is not just communication. Even though there is a part of communication in prayer. Prayer is communion. And that is number four. So it's a call upon me. And I will show you. So it's a two way stream. If you have prayed. And you do not feel better. You did not pray. You just complain. <laughs> because if it is communion. Two thoughts should be rubbing each other. And the superior touch should dominate. You cannot encounter a superior touch. And this is another thing that is very important. You must know that God's ways are always higher than your ways. So when you are praying to no matter what he has deposited in you, his ways are still higher. Isaiah 55 verse 8. 
uh, all the way down to level. Because sometimes people think because God has given you a revelation, God has shown you some few things, it means that you are not equal with God. You are never, never, never equal with God. Amen? You are never equal with God. That's why I call the wisdom of God to be what God understands that humans know but do not understand. And that definition is from the book of Job chapter 28 verse 23. What is wisdom? Wisdom is what God understands that you do not understand but you know. You are aware about it. The day you begin to understand it, God have elevated to a different... There's always a mystery in wisdom. If there's no mystery, if it's everything, then there's no more wisdom of God. That's why it's always complex. Alright, number... Five, claim. In prayer, there's an asking part. You see that in the book of Matthew 7, 7. You need to file it. Please write this down. This is extremely important because this is the best part you can get out of it. When it comes to claim, when you have an accident, if you're in America, you need to find your insurance claim and the house and the rest of it. But please note this. When it comes to this aspect of claim in prayer, claim is not a right it's not a good thing it's a right thing how many of you know you can be claiming something but somebody died amen somebody that hit your car died from the motor accident but you still have to file your claim your child may die from the accident you still have to file the claim claims are not always good things but they are right things did somebody cut the difference there it's not a good thing. Amen. And when it comes to the kingdom of God, when you are making petition, it doesn't mean you because you make a petition and God answer you mean you've done something good. You've done something right. Prayer is not doing something good. It's doing something right. Did somebody cut a huge difference? Because the prayer you are offering to God is given to you by God. You see that? It's God. When I finally claim God bless me with healing, it's not because I'm good, that's why he's going to bless me with healing. It's because he sent his son Jesus Christ to save me and through the blood of the son Jesus Christ, I cannot receive. So I did not do a good thing by making that request. It's only a right thing to do because Jesus has fully paid the price for my healing. So I must constantly know when I file, I'm not doing a good thing. I'm doing the right thing. It is Jesus that did the good thing. I did the right thing. It is Jesus that did the good thing. I did the right thing. Jesus did the good thing. I must not claim any... Because there is this thing in people when they receive a miracle from doing the right thing, they forget they did not do the good thing. God, I feel the power of the God like us. I feel like preaching. Amen. I said there's this thing in people that when they receive a miracle from the Lord, they keep thinking they've done a good thing. That's why miracle have come to them. But I want you to know you receive a miracle not because you did a good thing. You will not have ever received a miracle because your sins are as red as blood. But God knew that you need help and they sent the Lord Jesus Christ and now all you have to do is do the right thing by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ and good thing comes to you. I hope you get that. And the last point, uh, not the last point, number six, compliance. Psalm 145 verse 19, it said, the Lord will feel the needs of those who fears him of those who fears him he will get it done he will get their needs done and it will cause them to be saved those that fear him those that live righteously those that live holy those that are pursuing after god he will fulfill the desires of those who fear him comply those that comply those who fear him those that comply they will also will hear their cry and save them their prayer and save them their cry you see so compliance is very important and prayer is one of the ways to comply with god's demand so prayer the father you are praying is a righteous thing because prayer is one of the way to comply amen the last point which is number seven pray 
without season. It's the same thing as men ought always to pray and not to friend. Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. And I want to cover this seven point here because there is sometimes in a believer's life we kind of don't understand what that means. We think, does that mean I should pray all the time when I have work to do? I have all this to do? No. That's not what God is saying. God is telling you two major things. One, is telling you to always be ready to pray. Always be in the mood to pray. Always be in the mood to pray. Amen? He said that you should not cease to pray. First Thessalonians 5, 17. Do not stop praying. Do not stop praying. Do not stop praying. So always be in the mood to pray. Glory be to God. Pray without season. Men ought always to pray and not to pray. Pray without season. Pray without season. So you may always be in that mood to communicate to the Lord. There are some people begin to say, I don't feel like. No, you should be so sensitive. So one way is telling you to be so sensitive to be ready to pray. On another dimension is telling you that prayer is always necessary in all seasons. It's always necessary for you to pray in all seasons. Amen? So those are the things that I want us to take note of that God has called us. You are doing the right thing. God instituted prayer and if it's not a good thing, it is God's idea. You see that? Prayer is God's idea. So number one, there's a spirit that is always willing that is in you, empowered by the Holy Ghost for you to pray. And number two, there is always a Jesus channel. is the only way, the truth and the life, John chapter 14 verse 6. So you need that channel or it's not going to work. Number three, you need to make sure your prayer is commitment. The objective of prayer is to show you are committed to God. Because, let, please take note of this, in case you do not know, everybody prays. But not everybody prays through Jesus Christ to God. People, everybody prays. Some people pray to river. Amen. So, your prayer as a child of God, we pray to God. And we show that we are committed to God. And that commitment is a sign of humility. Because the greatest sin you can commit is to be self-sufficient self-sufficient and they tried it in the in the garden of Eden. it didn't work well for them and it will never work well for you god I, I don't need to pray to nobody i'm bigger than god so every time you don't pray you're showing yourself sufficient your hard work your, you will suffer and suffer you don't even know you've not started think about how it has been working out for you 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 will understand what it means to work and work and work and work and everything you work for fails You'll be going to say, why? Is this all I was working for? Why? Because you did not commit it in prayer to the Lord's hand. No matter the success, if it's not in God's hand, it's vanity. So you must take note of this point. So let God be the one giving you all of these things that you are receiving from the Lord. So you want to show your commitment by humbling yourself and showing commitment. Then you want to commune. With the Lord. Don't just pray and hear yourself. Let God pray. It's not just communication, it's communion. Amen. And the sign that you have communion is that you are no more sad. Your countenance cannot be sad. Just like Hannah's countenance was no more sad. And after that, what next is there? You need to know you need to do the right thing. You are not doing a good thing, but you need to do the right thing. God has done the, the good thing, which is you fire your claim. And the last thing. You need to know when you fear the Lord and you cry to the Lord to save you. Some kind of thing you don't want to be part of because you need to comply to the Lord. Compliance. And the last is for you to know he wants you to pray with that season. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17. He wants you to ha just have the spirit of prayer. Just have the spirit of prayer all the time. Pray without season. Pray without season. And he's the one that wants you to do that. Stand up on your feet and give him praise on this Bible, second Bible study of the month of John. Thank you for what you have done. I release the blessings of God over you, over your family. I release it right now.